for each of the following triads, name the major key. Then write the functional chord symbol below the stuff. Here's our example. A major key with two flats is B flat major. We have two G notes here. We have a B flat and a D. The G notes will be the root. B flat is the third and D is the fifth. This is a triad with G as the root. From G to B flat is a major third. And from G to D is a perfect fifth. Therefore, this is a minor triad. G is the sixth note of B flat major. So we will write using lowercase or Roman numeral six, and it is in the root position. Therefore, this is all we need to write. The next key signature has one flat, which is F major. We have here a B flat, D, G and B flat. The root here is G, B flat is the third, and D is the fifth, and here we have another third. From G to B flat is a minor third, and from G to D is perfect fifth, therefore this is a minor triad. G is the second note of F major, this, this is a supertonic chord, and it's, it's a minor triad. We use a lowercase Roman numeral two. And because the third is the lowest note, this makes it the first inversion. So this is the symbol for the first inversion. The next E signature has four sharps, which is E major. We have E, another E, A and C sharp. A will be the root, C sharp will be the third, and E, both E's will be the fifth. From the root, which is A, to C sharp is a major third, and from E to E is a perfect fifth. This is a major triad. And the A is the fourth note in the key of E major, so this is the subdominant chord. And because the fifth is the lowest note, this makes it the second inversion. The next key signature has six flats, which is G flat major. The notes here are A flat, C flat, F, and A flat. The F note is the root, A flat is the third, C is the fifth, and we have another A flat which is the third. From F to A flat is a minor third, and from F to C flat is a diminished fifth, therefore this is a diminished triad. F is the seventh note of G flat major, therefore we need to use lowercase Roman numeral seven. And because the third is the lowest note, this makes it first inversion. The last key signature has five sharps, which makes it B major. We have an F sharp. We have an A sharp, we have a C sharp, and another F sharp. F sharp is the root, A is the third, A sharp is the third, C sharp is the fifth, and F sharp is another root. From F sharp to A sharp is a major third. From F sharp to C sharp is a perfect fifth. This is a major triad. F sharp is the fifth note of B major, therefore this is the dominant chord. We're using the uppercase Roman numeral 5, and it's in the root position, therefore this is our final answer here. For the B part of the question, we have to write the following seven chords using accidentals. We can see here the root quality chord symbols. The first example shows F dominant 7th with E flat as the lowest note, which makes it the third inversion. The next chord here is E flat dominant 7th over G. I will first write it in root position. I will start with an E flat note and write 
the other notes of this seventh chord. There are two methods to write it using intervals. We have to find a major third from E flat to G is a major third. Then perfect fifth from E flat to B is right now augmented fifth. I will add a flat to make it perfect fifth. And then we need a minor seventh from E flat to D is a major seventh. Uh, I will add a flat to make it minor seventh. Another method is to figure out in which major key E flat is the dominant note. A flat major is that key or A flat minor. In A flat major, we have four flats. We have B flat, we have E flat, we have A flat, we don't have an eighth note, and we have D flat. So if we apply those accidentals, we would get the same answer. Now we need to make this in the first inversion where G is the lowest note. I will have to move this E flat up an octave. So I will write it here and I will write E flat between these two flats here and then I will raise the E flat from the bottom of this chord. The next chord is a B diminished seventh chord. I will write a B note and then I will write the rest of the notes of this, this seventh chord. There are two methods to write this. The first method is using intervals. The second method is to figure out to what minor key does this chord belong. With intervals, we need to find a minor third, a diminished fifth, a diminished seventh. From B to D is a minor third. From B to F is a diminished fifth. And from B to A is a minor seventh. We need to make it diminished, so I will add a flat here. The second method is to figure out to which minor key does this diminished seventh chord belong. We need to figure out in what minor key B would be the leading note. That key is C minor. In C minor, we have three flats, B flat. However, that one is raised to the leading note, so therefore we have B natural here. Then the next note is E flat. We don't have an E note here. And the third flat is A flat, which would be this flat here. The next chord is D7 dominant over C. So third inversion of this dominant seventh chord. I will first write it in root position. So I will start with the D note and then write the other notes of the seventh chord using intervals. D to F is a minor third. I'm making it major third. D to A is a perfect fifth. And then D to C is a minor seventh. So we have here a D dominant seventh chord. The second method is to figure out in which major or minor key D would be the dominant note and then apply the key signature of that key. D is the fifth note or the dominant note in the key of G major. And G major has one sharp, F sharp. And then we have to make the C the lowest note. The easiest way to do this is just to move this upper C note down an octave. And then removing the C note from the top of the chord. The next chord is a G sharp diminished seventh chord. So I will start with the G sharp and then write the rest of the notes of the seventh chord. Using intervals, G sharp to B is a minor third. G sharp to D is diminished fifth and G sharp to F is diminished seventh. So it's already a diminished seventh chord here using intervals. The other method is to figure out in which minor key G sharp would be the leading note. That key is A minor. A minor has no sharps or flats and it has harmonic minor. A harmonic minor has G sharp as the leading note. The last chord here is A flat dominant seventh over C. So that is the first inversion of a dominant seventh chord. I will start with A flat. Using intervals, from A flat to C is a major third. From A flat to E is augmented fifth. I will use a flat to make it perfect fifth. And then from A flat to G is a major seventh. 
I will use a flat to make it minor 7. The other method is to figure out in which major or minor key A flat would be the dominant note. That key is D flat major. There is no such key as D flat minor. So in the key of D flat major, we have five flats, B flat, we don't have a B note, E flat, right here, A flat, right here, D flat, we don't have a D note, and G flat, right here. Now we need to make this first inversion, that means C has to be the lowest note. The easiest way to do that is to move this A flat up an octave. So I will put an A flat here, and then I will erase A flat from the bottom of this chord. Mm 